Hang on a second. Didn't I pass a goal on my Patreon? Oh yeah, the Rebirth of Mothra trilogy. Damn, that was a while ago. I better get on that. Okay, well, I finished the Heisei Godzilla series, and these came out right after. So this seems like a good time to talk about them. Now time to find out if Toho cares about Mothra as much as Godzilla. I'll bet they care. So if you remember my videos on the Heisei Godzilla films, the most successful entry was Godzilla and Mothra The Battle for Earth, which was aimed at a younger, more female-centric audience than your typical Godzilla movie. So when the Godzilla series got put on hold after Godzilla vs. Destroya, in 1996 Toho decided to give Mothra her own movie for the first time since the original Mothra back in 1961 with Rebirth of Mothra. And in keeping with her previous appearance, this went even further in targeting a young female audience being aimed primarily at little girls. Think of it like She-Ra to Godzilla's He-Man, but with way less homoerotic overtones. Because it's aimed at little girls, it makes sense Toho got an American distributor with a flying pony as a mascot. And there's even more cute animals during the opening credits. Hey, wait a minute, Godzilla's the only one who's allowed to fight Bambi. So as you can probably tell, the movie has a pro-environmental message, and because it was made in the 90s, it's delivered with all the subtlety of Captain Planet's mullet. We've got a deadline, don't forget. We'll just have to fell the young trees, too and mix them in for pulp. Yes, that's right. Kill the young trees. We'll use them to make veal paper. <laughs> and great job, fellas. By destroying so much of the environment, you've unleashed the monolith monsters. Oh, and I think by taking this weird medallion thingy, they also free Rita Repulsa or something. Whoa, hey, get down! Yeah, they would get some teenagers with attitude, but they're too old for this movie's target audience. Instead, the movie focuses on these little kids. Give it back! It belongs to me! Stop! Well, the 90s Gamera movies weren't that bad when it came to Kenny's, so I guess they just migrated over to this series. And their dad is the head of the logging company that's destroying the environment, so there's even more reason to hate him. He also has the medallion from earlier, which greatly upsets the Mothra twins, and whoa, 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 what are they doing? Fairy! Oh, they're summoning a smaller, even cutesier version of Mothra. Okay, that's slightly less evil than what I thought. There's a few differences with the Mothra twins in this movie. One, they're not actually twins, and two, they also have names. Mona. Laura. Yeah, I'm still gonna keep calling you the Mothra twins. It's just easier that way. So just what kind of threat are we dealing with here? Someone has removed the sacred seal of Elias. If Belvira did take the seal, what would happen? She would try to use the creature held in this rock as her slave. Okay, what you're describing sounds bad, but Mothra is just too cute for me to take it seriously. And in case you forgot, this has an environmental message. Look at all this junk mail. It gets worse every week. Yeah, it's a waste of paper. No wonder we're losing the rainforest. I mean, did Fern Gully teach us nothing? As heavy-handed as the environmental stuff is, it's still easier to take than the scenes with the kids. Ah! 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 What's going on in here? Your daughter's Carrie, that's what. Actually, she's under the control of not Rita Repulsa riding a Jim Henson puppet. This is Belvira, the movie's villain, although I still say these kids are the real villains of the movie. At least Belvira thinks so too and tries to kill him. Oh no, what are you doing? Don't save him! Please don't worry, we don't mean any harm. Yeah, even if you did, I don't think you could. Now, well, Belvira doesn't seem so bad. So far, it looks like she just wants to kill the Kennys and get drunk. Oh, and she might also be into bondage play. You know, we're almost 20 minutes in and the only monsters we've seen so far have been really tiny, cute ones. This is like Honey, I Shrunk the Kaiju movie. At least we get an action sequence where Belvira and the Mothra twins get into a Star Wars-style dogfight and shoot up the house. Although the daughter doesn't seem to give a shit any of this is happening. Okay, would you take it outside? I just finished redecorating this house. I gotta admit, this part would probably make for a pretty cool theme park ride. Belvira also gets the medallion, but how is she getting away? You could stop her with a fly swatter. No, not a butterfly net, you little shit. I said a fly swatter. Belvira, please stop it! Don't make us ask you nicely again! Great, not only did Belvira get away, but Fairy Moth returned into a plush toy. Which it kinda already looked like before, but now it really does. Belvira. Will she be coming back again? 
She's heading for Hokkaido. Oh, that's not a good idea. Didn't she hear? Do not go to Hokkaido. Look, the tiny monsters are cute and all, but are we gonna get some giant ones in this movie? There's Ghidorah? Gesundheit. Yep, you heard that right. The ancient monster the medallion has unleashed is called Deskidora, or as it's also known, Death Ghidorah, which makes me wonder why the English dub didn't just call him that since that's a way cooler name. Now the name might make you think it's the same monster as King Ghidorah, but they're actually very different. King Ghidorah is a flying three-headed dragon from outer space, whereas Death Ghidorah is... pretty much the same thing. Only one thing to do now, fly away from Japan and leave everybody on their own. What lovely dolls you've got there! Oh, they're from the Barbie Space Channel 5 collection. The stewardess also mistakes Fairy Mothra for a toy, which... Yeah, that's understandable. Unfortunately, they're too late to stop Belvira from unleashing Death Ghidorah. And yes, I am gonna keep calling him that instead of Death Ghidorah. How are they gonna stop Belvira now? Kites. Belvira's one weakness. If this plan doesn't work, they might have to bust out the big guns and use some cotton candy to stop her. Deskidora, I command you to rise. No, 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 no. That's not how you summon a monster. It's supposed to go like this. Dragon! Rise! We now get our first look at Death Ghidorah, and honestly, I kind of like his design. Yeah, sure, he's got all the familiar Ghidorah characteristics. Three heads, wings, energy beams. But this version has four legs instead of two, and I like that they made him darker and rougher looking than the original Ghidorah. It's terrible! Ah, come on, this isn't even close to the goofiest looking monster I've seen on this show. With Death Ghidorah unleashed on the world, the Mothra twins give the medallion to the kids. Because sure, they seem like the best ones to protect it. There's only one thing that can stop Death Ghidorah, and that's Godzilla. But, because he's not in this movie, they'll have to use Mothra instead. Mothra is too old, she'll never be able to make it. Why can't we just let her rest in peace? Because her last movie made money, and when you got a cash cow, you gotta milk that shit for all it's worth. In order to summon her, though, they're gonna have to sing the famous Mothra song. Monsura. With all the weird graphics going on here, I think this is the closest we've ever gotten to seeing a Mothra music video. Alright, it's an incredibly cute, fuzzy monster to the rescue. But could you maybe wait until Death Ghidorah kills these two brats? No, don't go! Well, get going then! I really hate you, Taki! Well, I hate you too, so there! Look, kids, please, you're both very hateable. Oh, good, finally a monster battle to break up all that whining. What's going on? No, I'm pretty sure it's Rodan. Yes, it's Mothra! God, I wish these kids would go all Anakin Skywalker in that lava. I mean, they're both about as whiny. Mothra tries her best, but her cuteness proves to be no match for Death Ghidorah. Probably a bad idea to get her to fight him anyway. Don't you know what happens to Moss when they get near fire? Good god, this is like watching Rainbow Bright fight the Cloverfield monster. Luckily, Mothra got knocked up and laid an egg before she left, which means we got a caterpillar Mothra as a backup. And to help it hatch, we get another song. Alright, instead of a monster that looks like an adorable plush toy, we've got one that looks like a big slimy turd, so that's a little less cute. Speaking of huge turds, the kids are still here. Hey look, I found this in my pocket. I don't want it. I don't want it either! Well, I don't want you two in the movie, but we can't always get what we want, now can we? Oh, and great job guarding the medallion, Belvira just steals it back. Thank God Mothra's there to bail him out. Well, that does it. No more putting the fate of the Earth in the hands of a couple Kennys. Shit, did Mothra just kill him? Nah, they're still alive. Damn it. Mothra didn't fare so well against Death Ghidorah, so what's her kid gonna do? Oh shit, Rainbow Silly String! Baby Mothra's got all the powers of a kid's birthday party. Not surprisingly, this doesn't work. Maybe Baby Mothra should try firing something out the other end. And this movie has more in common with a Gamera movie than just the Kennys. We also get some gratuitous monster gore. I will give this movie credit, instead of skimping on the monster action, we do actually get a pretty lengthy battle section here. Unfortunately, smaller, cuter monsters are no match for Death Ghidorah. Luckily, Baby Mothra's got some more tricks up its sleeve, since apparently it's all 
also the Predator. Where is it? Camouflaged. All moths use camouflage. Yeah, I knew that, you little shit. God, why does this movie keep teasing me by putting these little brats near fire? I know nothing's gonna happen to him, but I keep getting false hope. Mothra, on the other hand, really seems to be getting burned. Run away! Run away! Yeah, that's probably a good idea. Before she does, though, they gotta make sure to destroy some Japanese model maker's hard work. Hmm, hydropower. Death Ghidorah's one weakness! Wait a second, Mothra, don't stop in the ocean. These puppets get heavy when they're wet, and they smell funny. Mothra can't die now! Yeah, we still have two more movies to go. But Die Mothra does, which actually happens a lot in these movies. Seriously, I think Mothra's the kaiju equivalent to Kenny from South Park. As opposed to, you know, these Kennys. Now only Baby Mothra's left to defeat Death Ghidorah, and he just got his wings. And yeah, real nice, kids. Your dad's in a wheelchair, but sure, make sure the plants have a drink of water. I don't know about this hospital. Hey, what are you doing? Cell phones aren't allowed in the hospital. It's against the rules. What? No cell phones? How are people supposed to kill time in the waiting room? And in case anyone forgot, this movie has an environmental message. Yaku Island, where the second monster landed, is known as a World Heritage Nature Conservation Area. It's also famous for its thousand-year-old virgin forest of cedar trees. They'd just be glad the monsters haven't destroyed any cities so far. Those construction workers could use a break. Meanwhile, Baby Mothra tries to find a good place to cocoon by going to the tree from Fern Gully. Or maybe the one from Avatar? Eh, whatever, same thing. And you know what that means? We get another song. So now after cocooning, we get a new Mothra called Mothra Leo, which is... Still really cute and fuzzy. Well, I guess when you have a tried and true design, you don't want to mess with it too much. It's gigantic. It's even larger than a jumbo jet. Even if it is that big, a moth's still a moth. Oh, what do you know? The mom's saying what everyone's thinking. More people die from bee stings than they die from being bitten by a snake. And that would be relevant if Mothra was a giant bee. Actually, if you want to use stats, mosquitoes kill more people than any other animal. So what we need is a mosquito kaiju to fight Ghidorah. Alright, actually I'm being a little harsh here, since Mothra Leo seems to be a lot more powerful than the original, and hits Death Ghidorah with some devastating laser Floyd attacks. <laughs> and I think it just killed Belvira. Seriously though, I wasn't joking about Mothra Leo being way more powerful. It's got laser beams, wing lightning, a bunch of tiny little Mothras. It's like it's been equipped with a bunch of over-the-top video game finishing moves. Alright, I can't believe I'm saying this, but... Cute little bastard's actually kinda badass. It's amazing. Mothra went from looking like it had no chance against Death Ghidorah to completely wiping the floor with him. Instead of fighting and dying, the first one should have just waited for her kid to hit puberty and defeat Ghidorah. And I know I joked about Belvira's dragon looking like a Jim Henson animatronic, but apparently it actually was. Well, I guess now she's gonna have to ride this thing. Oh, great. Mothra and Ghidorah's battle destroyed the entire forest, but somehow these two are still alive. And would you help out your dad? This forest isn't wheelchair accessible, you know. With Ghidorah gone, now they just need to take care of Belvira. Hey, she's getting away! We're sorry, Taiki, but we didn't tell you the whole story. Yes, you see, Belvira's really our sister. Okay, I mean, the BTK killer had a family, they still put him away for his crimes. You can't just let people get away with evil shit because they're related to you. See, Belvira? is a bit of a troublemaker, it's true. But she's still our elder sister and we love her. Okay, fine, let her go. Just don't try to destroy the world again, you little scamp. And even though Death Ghidorah has been defeated, the real monster is not caring about the environment. So what now? It may not be too late to save the trees in the forest. It's gonna take many years of hard work. Eh, just make sure you don't unleash any evil space dragons again. I think you'll be fine. And besides, there's no need to worry about the environment since Mothra's there to magically fix everything. Yeah, who needs tree planting when you got fairy dust? Now let's all celebrate by going for milkshakes and making sure to use plastic straws. Goodbye now! Goodbye, Mothra. We'll be sure and call you again when the Australian bushfires happen. Remember that? Remember last year when the Australian wildfires were in the news and then COVID hit and everybody just kind of forgot? Whatever happened with that? 
Longtime viewers of my channel know that I liked a lot of the Heisei Godzilla films. So, how does Rebirth of Mothra compare? Very! Well, let's just say I probably wasn't the target audience for this movie. If you like the darker, more realistic tone of the Heisei Godzilla movies, you'll probably be disappointed, since this goes for a much more colorful, light-hearted feel, complete with lots of cutesy moments and slapstick. It's also a little long at an hour and 46 minutes, which I know doesn't sound that long, but this is the kind of movie that really needed to come in under 90 minutes. But on the plus side, it doesn't cop out on the monster action, giving us some pretty long fight scenes. And I gotta admit, Death Ghidor is actually a pretty cool villain, even if he is just an updated version of one of Godzilla's classic enemies. It's definitely not up there with the best of the Godzilla movies, but it also isn't down with the worst ones either. Now if they could just get rid of those damn kids. Speaking of which, I think I'll take a break before I get to the sequels. There's only so much Kenny I can take at one time, you know? Well, that's all for now. Until next time.